Welcome to Subscription Drop 1 for Thinking Particle 6. In this video, we will discuss Volume Break Operator and the new additions we have done to it. Before we do so, let me just show you our setup here we have. So we create one particle, assign it a standard shape, a Q, and then we have another dynamic set that takes care about the fragmentation or the volume breaking. That's our volume break operator we have here. Then we have a downward force with a negative value and we do a physics simulation based on the bullet physics solver. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple, pretty nice setup. Why should uh, anyone use Volume Breaker inside of Thinking Particles? Let me just explain how this works and why we think Thinking Particles Volume Breaker is the best solution for your destruction sequences. What you can see here is a lot of debris and we did a really fine detail of volume breaking here as you can see in the wireframe and everything is broken here. So usually you would also pre-break the object, any tool or there are several tools out there that can pre-break your mesh and you could even feed it back into thinking particles. However, when you do it inside of thinking particles, you get one big advantage. The pre-broken object is not broken at all. So the remaining mesh you see here, that's the flat surfaces on the cube, they are still connected, they are still watertight and you won't have any cracks, any uh, texture errors or any kind of these artifacts you usually see from uh, pre-broken objects. And to prove my point, I'm now going to assign a solid glass geometry. And what you see here is the reflection of the uh, debris or the front surface. And as you can see, it's totally watertight. So refraction rays go through this solid object. So this is still a volume, a closed solid volume. The remaining mesh stays totally clean and clear. And right now, to my knowledge, Volume Breaker inside of Thinking Particles is the only one that can do that easily. And there's not much you, can, you need to adjust or do. It is automatic. So whenever you break off pieces, they will break off as fragments. However, the remaining mesh will remain intact. No cracks, no breaks, no artifacts whatsoever. And I think that alone is a powerful argument for volume breaker inside of thinking particles. And as you can see now, it was already really powerful and easy to control. However, there is more we have added to a thinking particles volume breaker. Let me just turn back to a standard gray color here and let's have a look at this. So what we get here now is this crystallized look, these sharp cut surfaces. It nearly looks like diamonds and that's usually uh, an effect we, we really don't want to see or have necessarily unless you want to simulate crystals or quartz. However, we have added new features in Thinking Particles 6 drop 1. And there's a feature we have there that even works with large chunks of a volume broken object. So I have increased now the size of our fragments and you can see now very clear these flat surfaces, these clearly cut flat surfaces. So how do we get detail on these surfaces so that it looks more like we are actually breaking concrete or something brittle? For that, we have implemented a new feature in this subscription drop one, and that's our roughness rollout you see here. The first thing you would want to do is turn on the noise and increase the tessellation a little bit. For now, let me use just a tessellation of two. Besides the advantages I already talked about with the remaining mesh, the tessellation only happens on fragmented faces. This is also a huge advantage if you compare Volume Breaker inside of Thinking Particles to other external solutions. 
we only need to tessellate in these areas where you really need detail. This is another great advantage of the volume break operator in thinking particles. The tessellation right now is set at a level of 2 and for some situations and scenes this is enough to create a really nice rough look of your surface. Let's have a look in a real rendering. As you can see this looks pretty nice. We have a rough surface, increased detail, all fine and nice. So. Let's just try out increasing the tessellation. That should give us a much more detail. Let's see what happens when we increase the tessellation. Doubling the amount means we have four times more of the triangles now. And as you can see, we can now get details here. We see these little bubbles. And I'm sure you already guessed what uh, noise function this is that creates these nice cells or bubbles. We are using a cellular material. Let me just show you for a second what we can do with that. We use the cellular map to create this noise structure, this displacement of our surface. We can adjust the size. As you can see, now we have these big bulgy bubbles here. So we can adjust with our material the noise structure one to one, which is nice and gives you real control of the look of your broken off edges in Volume Breaker. Let's close the dialog for now and check out the other features we have in Volume Breaker for Thinking Product 6. We can control the map scale as well inside of Volume Breaker, which is also really nice and gives us some extra features and functionality. As you can see, we have uh, reduced the size and we get much more cellular structure right now into our surfaces. Some other features we have is controlling the roughness. Let me just overdo it to visualize what we can do with the roughness control. This creates now really long, heavy spikes. So we get a lot of spikes in here and you will see when I rotate, let me just rotate a little bit around it. You will see that we get a really rough surface now, which from time to time might be a good thing to have or not but it just explains how our roughness feature works. And again, it's overdone here right now. Let me turn it back to two and we will get now a much more rougher surface here. And keep in mind, this is real volume breaker working here. So all the physics simulation works with the displaced geometry. So that's why uh, you see from time to time when I change parameters that the fragments change in space or pop around. And that's because we have to simulate through with the new geometry. We also have another mode, how to render the noise, and that's called differential. And this mode is unique. To my knowledge, there's nothing like it on the market right now. This differential mode evaluates the noise function in a way that when one side is displaced positive, it displaces the other side negative. So it's the only displacement method on the market right now that keeps the volume and does not create extra volume when you break the object. So the pieces perfectly fit into each other. It's a very powerful feature and it helps a lot in physics simulation because you're not creating intersecting geometry. Differential comes with its own set of parameters. The differential distance, for example. Adjusting the differential distance will allow you to change how the noise texture is evaluated. Increasing this value will create smoother surfaces, smoother dents. This is very good when you want to avoid self-intersecting geometry, which is never a good idea, especially with physics simulation. As we have set the values right now, we get a really nice concrete-like or rock-like rough surface look. The differential mode is, in my opinion, the best mode to use with a volume breaker in thinking particles. There's also some other parameters like the roughness that still works. And as you can see, increasing the roughness will give us a more concrete-like look 
a much more organic look. And this is really what we want to achieve with this new volume breaker functionality. All the settings and controls are only affecting the regions where the tessellation actually happens. All other non-broken areas are not affected by these parameters. This is a really powerful feature of Thinking Particles Volume Breaker. There are also functions to reduce the amount of triangles after tessellation has happened. The Optimize section is controlling all these aspects of the tessellation. And the Optimize function will reduce automatically the mesh density. So this allows you to get a, a much simpler representation of your surface. And most of the time it works pretty fine and nice. So you reduce the, the amount of triangles, which is good for physics simulation. And on top of that, you can also add an auto smoothing. And this will simulate even smoother surfaces, even though you have less triangles for that. But for now, let me turn off the optimize and let's have just a final look at our scene here. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little look into the new features of Volume Breaker in Subscription Drop 1. We did a lot of work to enhance the look of volume breaking and I hope you all enjoy your free subscription drop for Thinking Particle 6. Do not forget to check out the other videos as well about Subscription Drop 1, a free upgrade to all Thinking Particles users.